Joey was born at Mercy Hospital in Des Moines, Iowa on April 26, 1975. He grew up in a rural area outside of Waukee where he used to play basketball on the street in front of his house. He embraced music at an early age, which he attributes to the influence of his parents, they always sat me down in front of the radio, rather than the TV. He played guitar until receiving his first drum kit as a gift from his parents at age 8 and started his first band while in elementary school. At a young age, Jordison's parents divorced, he and his two younger sisters stayed with their mother. His mother remarried and set up a funeral parlor where Jordison would occasionally help. Jordison has stated that he felt a sudden responsibility to be the man of the house, and this responsibility turned him odious in which he played drums. He later described them as total speed metal thrash. The band helped Jordison break new ground, playing for live crowds in support of local bands including Atomic Opera, which featured Jim Root and Heads on the Wall, which featured Sean Crahan. After a multitude of lineup changes including the presence of Craig Jones and Josh Brainerd, who would later appear in Slipknot, the band released two demos in 1993, Visceral and Mud Fuchia. He cites Keith Moon, John Bonham, Peter Criss, Gene Krupa, and Buddy Rich as his main influences. After leaving school, Jordison was hired by a local music store called Musicland. In March 1994, after a recommendation from his new friend, he got a job at a Sinclair garage in Urbandale. Jordison worked the night shift, which he preferred as it left his weekends free and allowed him to spend time with his friends and listen to music while working. In early 1995, Modifidius disbanded because of a shift in interest from thrash metal to death metal in America. Following this Jordison joined a local band called The Rejects as a guitarist, with whom he only played a couple of shows. Jordison was also involved in a band with Paul Gray and vocalist Don Decker, named Anal Blast. Gray also attempted to recruit him for another band, Body Pit, but he declined the invitation to remain in the Rejects. During the forming period of Slipknot, Paul recruited Joey to join a punk band called The Have Nots in the spring of 1996. Joey would leave The Have Nots in February 1997 to focus on Slipknot, but instead reformed the Rejects which would play Des Moines up until Slipknot left to record Slipknot's self-titled album which Paul played in after The Have Nots broke up. On November 28, 1995, Mark Anthony Cadavos approached Jordison while he was working offering him a position in a new project called The Pale Ones. Intrigued and at a point where he was lost, Jordison attended rehearsals at Anders Kolsafini's basement and immediately wanted to be part of this new band. Speaking of this moment he said, I remember trying so hard not to smile, so I didn't look like I wanted to join, I remained poker-faced, but I thought they ruled. A lot of Slipknot's early development was discussed by band members while Jordison worked night shifts at Sinclair's garage. Slipknot would become pioneers to the new wave of American heavy metal. Jordison was accompanied by two custom percussionists, giving their music a feel that Rolling Stone touted as suffocating. Each member of Slipknot is assigned a number. Joey was assigned number one because drums are recorded first. Joey has produced one album with Slipknot 2005 live album 9.0 Live. In August 2008, Jordison broke his ankle and Slipknot had to cancel some of its English tour dates. On August 22, 2009, Jordison was taken to the emergency room for a burst appendix, less than an hour before he was to take the stage for Auburn, Washington's KISW Pain in the Grass concert. As a result, Slipknot cancelled following shows in August and September, to give Jordison time to recover. In August 2010 Jordison was voted the best drummer of the past 25 years by readers of Rhythm magazine. Competitors included Mike Portnoy, Neil Peart, Phil Collins, Dave Grohl. When asked to comment he stated I'm at a loss for words. This is beyond unbelievable. Something like this reminds me every day why I continue to do this. There is a meaning behind each Slipknot member's mask. They are a reflection of their personalities or a past personal experience. 
Jordison's Japanese no mask reflects a personal experience. When he was younger his mother wore the mask when she came home from Halloween drunk. He was terrified of the emotionless stare of the mask. In the early days of Mate Feed Kill Repeat album, he wore one plain white. For the self-titled album Slipknot, he decorated it with a few stripes and dots of paint. In Iowa he painted it with fake blood all over his mask, and for Volume 3 he did a variation of designs on it, more notable with claw slashes. He also quotes the design enables it to feel however you want it to feel scary, evil or perverted. All those things held in one mask. His new mask showed at the Fuse Fangoria Award Show as gray with black markings. Jordison's family announced that he had died in his sleep on the night of July 26, 2021, at the age of 46. An official cause of death has yet to be released.